So, we actually went to VidCon. This is still blowing my mind. And this is only the second episode of JagaCast. JagaCast was actually born out of VidCon. So, hey guys, welcome back to the JagaCast, the podcast where I talk about whatever I want, whenever I want. And sometimes we talk about big events that we've gone to, like VidCon. Now, if you all have been keeping up with the channel, you guys would know that we've been doing this thing called the convention circuit. We've been visiting a ton of conventions, so go and check that out. We have a ton of vlogs on them from Anime 45 to GalaxyCon. We did Tokyo X. And now we could say that we did VidCon, and we have four vlogs in the oven, in post-production, ready to show you guys. This was the experience that we had. And the funny thing about it is that VidCon wasn't originally supposed to be um, this year. It was supposed to be back in 2020, but when the Boomer Doomer happened, <laughs> I stole that from um, Wee Scheme, by the way. Um, when that event happened, it was like, nope, you're not going anymore. <laughs> and I was like, I'm crossing my fingers. I'm like, no, I got to go to this. I got to go to this. I want to go to this. I've been saving up. I've been saving up for that and E3 and Morphicon. And then, like, none of that just freaking happened. None of that happened. But I'm glad that I waited. Um, I think going in 2024 was better than going back then. Especially with all the mental health stuff that I've had going on. Especially with all the mental health adjustments that I've been making. Um, because imagine spotting out with somebody um, with the old diet that I had with food affects my diet and, um, food affects my diet, food affects my mental health, my bad. Um, so if I ate certain things, I would like just freak out. So the fact that I know about this now and I'm taking steps towards that, I think that made the experience all better. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. Let's actually start with this though, because VidCon, um, it was smaller than I imagined. It really was. I'm like looking at all these vlogs from even last year. I'm seeing like Nintendo's there. And they have this Mario Kart thing where you could go on and take a picture of yourself in that. And I'm like, heck yeah. Let's go and take a picture inside the Mario Kart thing. Nope, they're not there this year. And I'm like, what? Nintendo, please. At least I could jump in the Squishmallow pit. No, Squishmallow wasn't there either. They did have some really awesome... People like um, ATEMS, Black Magic, Elgato, which if you're a content creator, if you're somebody who likes to make stuff, then it's like, yeah, I want to check these out. I want to see them in person so I can decide whether to buy them. And it might be better to see it in that place than just go to your local Best Buy. So it was really cool. There were some other brands I didn't know about. Um, but yeah, other than that... I. Some of the boots there were pretty all right. They had some environments there as well, I could imagine, because they had, like, this Minecraft environment. Minecraft's apparently 15 years old now, so hooray for Minecraft. Um, and they had this other one where it's, like, you could go through this tunnel from, like, the Sendence to Rise of Red. And uh, um, I wonder if I have the picture of that. It's probably not a good time. <laughs> my phone fell off my couch. Um, other... There was so much fun stuff. They even had, like, the Creator Inc. area. And it's funny because James from The Odd Ones Out had, like, his own meet and greet. I think it was James who had his own personal, like, meet and greet there. But how was VidCon day by day? It's kind of weird because it felt like as though the 40s, it felt like it was dying as time went on. So let's start with this. Day one, um, your experience actually begins in the line because if you're social enough, then it means that you will get to meet some really awesome people. And I've met some really awesome people from gamers to other vloggers to um, animation people. So it's not hard to imagine that the experience began while you were in the line for VidCon. Even if you're out in that hot sun trying your best to survive and it's like you're covering yourself up, um, trying your best to stave off overheating, it's you're just gonna ha you're gonna have a good time in the line. And if you're willing to like socialize, your networking opportunities, which is one of the reasons why I went, your networking opportunities can begin in the line. And it's really cool because it was at that moment where I realized I'm not special. 
I had like these business cards ready. I'll, I was like, go and subscribe to my channel. Here's my channel link. Here's the card. Scan the QR code in the back if you want to check out um, my channel. No, it's like, you're not special at all, kid. There's at least like six other cards that you got. So it's like, it's not like GalaxyCon where it's like, oh, hence cosplay gave me her business card for um to check out her Instagram where she does really awesome um cosplays like Jax from the Amazing Digital Circus. Don't trust Jack's gifts. <laughs> it's more like um we're trying to get our content out. This is just another marketing strategy. Take this, do me a favor, check out my content. And it's really good. It's really fun. If you really are interested in networking, that's a good way to start it. And going into registration is not hard. What happens is that they give you like these little wristbands that you have to log yourself at at certain places. I guess it's a security protocol. But it also does help with stuff like the meet and greet so that that way, oh, you tap this onto the machine. There's your pictures. Which is really awesome. And then I guess it's like a bonus thing because anybody could trade like lanyards. Like I did find an industry lanyard on the floor. And my first thought was to give it back. But there was something that was lingering in me that I was like, oh, I could take this and go into the industry tract. I was like, nope, I'm not doing this. I'm going to just give it back to, um, to the table. But apart from that, day one didn't have anything. They had the festival stage open. The festival stage was pretty neat too. Um, I think that they began their crown creators thing at the festival stage on that day. But you couldn't go into the exhibition hall. Um, but you could go and check out the food truck. So it felt more like a socialization day, a social day for you to make friends, for you to see, oh, who's there? Who, you can, who can you go and check out? Um, and that was pretty awesome. But I think one of the biggest things that happened was the fact that this didn't even happen in VidCon. This happened outside of VidCon. And I was like, I met Matt Pats. And I was like, so what had happened was that um, they were doing an interview inside the exhibition hall. And there's this little glass panel where it's like, you could peep in. And somebody in my group for that day was like, is that Stephanie? Is that Matt Pat and Stephanie? And I was like, guys, please don't. I suffer with really horrible social anxiety. And it's like, you could see that in some of my vlogs. When I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> because again, mad respect for these guys. And so we're walking down to downtown Disney that day. And it's like, um, you know, let's go and check out. <laughs> let's go check out downtown Disney. And while we're walking in one direction, they're walking in the opposite direction. I'm holding my GoPro blissfully unaware. I don't think... It's either they didn't know that I was vlogging this, or they did and they just decided not to see anything. That's interesting. And it's like, we, we couldn't even tell. And somebody in my group was like, oh, there they are again. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is happening. And I did upload a short on this. By the time this comes out, there will be a short on this where I was like, oh my gosh, this man is so genuine. He's so awesome. And it's like, one thing that I've seen from one of the panels is how much fans that they have around them. Like, and he even took the time after one of his um, community panels. I think it's community. Yes, yeah, community. <laughs> Excuse me. My throat. Where it's like um, answering questions, meeting the fans, all this and that. Both him and Stephanie were doing this. And I was super duper awesome. And it's like, these guys really love the community that they've created. These guys really l want to interact and have fun with it. It's kind of funny because after I'm looking through Reddit, and I'm like, has anybody else met Matt Pat? How's he like? And it's like, you find these guys in some of the weirdest places. You find them in fried, um, Freddy's, and you find them in Target, and it's like, ah! But really, Matt Pat was super genuine. I doubt you will ever see this, but um, really stand-up guy. Just, I, and that's what I love about these creators. They're like, when you meet them and you find out how genuine they are, it's like, <laughs> sorry, my mind went just now, so I read it. I'll talk about it just now. But it's like, it makes you appreciate what they do even more. And it also makes me appreciate something, as, a, as somebody who suffers with social anxiety, it's like, when they could talk to you, like, genuine heart to heart to heart, 
it's like this. This is what could really bring on somebody. Is This is what could really help somebody deal with that. So it's like, I got to be grateful for that. And then, but apart from that, I will say this, downtown Disney, um, I don't know what you guys deal is with um, Selfie 6 or even the tripod. Um, the vlogger staff wasn't welcomed in um, downtown Disney. And I'm like, why is it not allowed? I can understand why it's not allowed in amusement parks. I don't understand why it's not allowed in downtown Disney. Even if I was like to put it away, put it inside my bag, they were like, nope, you can't do this. I was ready with the... Um, with the gorilla pod. Oh, it's actually right here. I was ready with the gorilla pod. And I was like, oh, I could switch this out and do this. No, we're not we're not letting you in at all. And we can't keep it for you. We don't have lockers for you guys. You would have to throw this away. This is one thing that I did appreciate about GalaxyCon. It's like GalaxyCon at least had locker rentals. But um, the thing about that, small potatoes. Let's not worry about that. Um, day two was really fun. That's when the panels opened, that's when the exhibitions opened. But one thing that really struck me was that um, the exhibition hall was smaller than I thought. I forgot if I said this before because I did have a botched take. I actually had two botched takes of this. Um, but the exhibition hall was a bit smaller than I could imagine. It's like I'm seeing some really cool stuff. I'm seeing Elgato and I'm seeing Atoms and I'm seeing um, Black Magic and I'm like, yes, these are some brands that I want to see. I want to be able to see them and see like, what can I invest in, in the future? Not now, but in the future. And it's like, um, that's cool. But I also wanted to see Nintendo and I wanted to see Squishmallow. The cool thing is that I want my living room to have some Squishmallows as um, like uh, um, <laughs> cushions instead of those cheap generic cushions that you get. And I'm like, I'm like, no Squishmallow? I, I would struggle to bring so many away because my suitcase was like packed. It was like over full. But I'm like, no Squishmallow? None? Okay. They did have like Creator Ink, but I think the odd ones out was there anyway. So it's like, yeah, you're going to have that kind of stuff there where they could come and do meet and greets and all that and it's like ah but i really expected the exhibition hall to have a little bit more i did like the environment stuff that they did with um with what was it what was it oh yeah minecraft minecraft celebrated 15 years they had like this big environment room where they show you this that and the other and then there was also one for Descendants, Rise of Red. And then you got one of those videos made. And that's really cool. And there were like little shops, little exhibition booths. That was really nice. But I felt like there could have been more. I'm like in shock that there weren't more um, things there to do. It's like I would love to see more of this. And as somebody, as a big Nintendo nerd, as a big Nintendo fanboy... <laughs> Who would, um, like, I'm not going to even try and make that sound good. As somebody who loved Nintendo, I was like, I want to see Nintendo again. Nope. One fun thing I will say, though, is that they're really, um, State Farm was there again. State Farm was at Tokyo X. Um, so to see them again was really cool. It's funny how they're doing the Jake from State Farm thing. And they're running with it. It's like, they made a whole video game now for Jake from State Farm. And I'm like, hell yeah, let's do this. Um, really cool video game that they had where it's like you got to run and you got to get these musical notes. And every time you get a certain amount of musical notes, the time um, extends and then all that. And I think that they did a money giveaway with that too. So it's like, yeah, that's pretty cool. I didn't win, but I mean, like I had a good time. And yeah... Apart from that, they had some really awesome community track panels. I think a lot of them were really awesome. And a lot of the stars did do a lot of socialization. They had like four stages set out. The spotlight stage, the amplify stage. I'm trying to remember the other ones. But I got to give a huge kudos to them when it came to the mental health tracks. I really needed that. Again, mental health has been my thing. Because imagine suffering with seizures, imagine suffering with um, 
epilepsy, imagine suffering with like an social anxiety. Where it's like, and again, if I suffer with social anxiety, some of you are asking like, why are you doing this then? The social anxiety that I suffer with is more in lines of me being um, confirmed to be someone who's good. I'll say that much. It's like, I want to make sure that I'm not a bad person. And so sometimes I seek validation on that. But at the end of the day, it was cool. I just wish it was like bigger. I wish that there was more because I felt like so you could knock out everything in a uh, afternoon, if not a day. But I will say though that the creator track is probably your best best when it comes to certain things. At least with the creator track, you're getting like a little more stuff. And if you're somebody looking to get more information as to how to make your content better, then this is the track for you. And in fact, that's why I learned like, hey, why don't you try podcasting? I wanted to do the Jagger cast for a while. Let me go and check out this podcast one. Instant information, instant encouragement. I'm like, yes, I'm going to do this. And the Jagger cast was born out of that. But apart from that, it's like, um, what else? What else? What else? The Creator Lounge was really awesome. The Creator Lounge was nice. It had some really good amenities. I love that video thing that they did. I've been using it in a lot of my shorts recently. Shorts where it's like, oh, I need to show you all the vlogger stuff and tell you all how good the vlogger stuff is. Woo! Um, we did get like one of these um, Stanley mugs, some of these tumblers. I'm shocked at how big the tumblers are. You get to create like your own name. They'll print your own name on the tumbler, and that's really sick. And they even give us like medals. I will say the downfall of the Creator Lounge is that there's this um there's this area where it's like they're talking about, oh, we'll help you improve your content. And then they're just telling you all the stuff that you're doing right and none of what you're doing wrong. And I'm like, why? If that's the case, just say that you're an affirmation booth. I wanna hear how I could improve my content. You all aren't telling me this. Please tell me what I'm doing wrong. But apart from that, I think it was really awesome. And let me tell you, one of the biggest reasons why you should go to VidCon is just meeting some really awesome people. Let me tell you, the amount of really awesome people that I met. And here's the other kicker about this. Um, you know with other conventions, like Tokyo X and um, Anime 4.5 and GalaxyCon, you gotta pay to get stuff. You got to pay to get a picture. You got to pay to get an autograph. VidCon is not like that. It's like, if you want to take a picture with people, you definitely can. And it costs you nothing. If you run into this person, you can take a picture with them. And you definitely can. I want to be able to one day be like, hey, I recognize you. Well, not me. I want people to be like one day, hey, I recognize you from this channel. You mind if I take a picture with you? And I'm like, hell yeah. Actually, no, I forgot. That did happen at VidCon. Two little boys walk up to me and they're like, Hey, I know you from the channel. Do you mind if I do you mind if you sign this? And I was like, heck yeah. Let's do it. And I did. That was fun. And even then with all of that, it's like um to see all the social stuff going on. Um I think one there were two big highlights, the two biggest highlights that I got was Quasi from the Try Guys. Like, I went to one of the panels and the creators' lounges, and it's like, he recognized my accent. A lot of people recognize my accents, and they could instantly be like, you're from Trinidad! I'm like, yeah, how did you know? It's like, your accents. Or they would be like, you're Brit are you British? I'm like, maybe. I mean, I grew up in Scotland. But Quasi was a whole vibe. The Try Guys were a vibe. Um, I actually ran into the Try Guys, like, I think on three separate accounts. So um, what had happened was that the, um, the first one was at the panel. I was like, hey, good to meet you all again. Um, well, good to meet you all for the first time. And half the time, I was like, Quasi is so awesome. <laughs> I'm sorry that I keep bringing him up. It's like, ah, I think he's my favorite now. Like, unintentionally so. Um, I got a photo up with them, and like we got a photo at the panel. No, not at the panel. Um, in the meet and greets. Um, and I'll tell you all about the meet and greets just now. 
Um, and then I, each of them I met separately a third time. So um, Keith, who's with Lou Berger, I um, had a meet and greet with Lou Berger too. So I um, went up, I got pics with them. It was like, it was so good to see you again, dude. Um, Zach and Kwesi I saw again at their community track panel, which was really awesome. I was like, I got a selfie with you, Zach, but, and I didn't say this out loud, but I was like, I really don't want a mask in this one. And luckily he wasn't wearing his mask. I took a selfie with him. Um, and then I saw Kwesi again. Out, and uh, I was like, hey. And it was just a little walk by so he could engage with his other fans. But I was like, I saw you again. That's pretty sick. And then, <laughs> that was a whole vibe. Just, they are a whole vibe. I hope that I get to meet them a fourth time. Um, and that doesn't even speak on how cool Miles and YB are. They're... <sighs> One thing I will say, though, is a lot of the meet and greets that I had, or a lot of the things that I wanted to do got cancelled. Um, with good reason, um, Kira Kostrin was cancelled because of um, sickness. She felt sick, and that makes sense. She doesn't want to get anybody else sick. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then my mentorship series got cancelled. And I'm like, does I even... Um, he got sick, but can you all at least replace it? And they're like, no. So I do think that they need to work on that. They need to find, like... They need to have, like, a backup method for this thing, where it's like, hey, there's so-and-so who wants to meet you. Do you guys mind if we work behind the scenes to reassign them real quick so that way they could get to meet these... Um, that way we could honor them. And I do wish that they did that because the standbys for me weren't cutting it. It was like the time I got Kira and I heard that she wasn't going to be there, I was like, it's too late. All my standbys that I would have wanted to meet, like the Nazi Classified podcast, it was too late. Oh, well, that's going to happen. But overall, they're... Everybody else, Happy Kelly, um, Plain Rock, Meeting Plain Rock, a um, few others, the theorist team who were super busy because they, they were meeting people and it's like, oh no, we have to go to this thing, sorry guys. And I'm like, it happened again, this happened again, it happened at the Blue School thing in um, GalaxyCon, it happened again, I was like, this close, but nope. Overall, I would say VidCon was a vibe, but by the fourth day, it's like everything had happened. And you're all like just waiting out the day. You're all like just trying to figure out, what else can I do? What else can I do? I could go and buy a t-shirt and mem remember this in addition to like my, um, I'm seeing it right, like right off screen. The lanyard wall, which is like two posts with lanyards um, with my Funko collection in between them could do that I could get like a t-shirt to remember this stuff so I did and I was rooming for like more people and it's like I couldn't see anybody that I recognized but even the um people that I did meet I met Charles I met Chris and Danny um they go by official odd Chris and official odd Danny something like that and there was this recurring joke where it's like how much times are we gonna run into you guys wow um and I and that was like really awesome I do have to say, though, that, um, gosh, man, there's a lot of really good things about VidCon that I did enjoy. Um, I do think that their mental health track, I went to two of their panels, and especially on one of the days when I needed it most, I was like, yeah, I really had to appreciate you all for doing this. Matt, and I think his other, the other name was Alex. I have to go and check it. Where's my phone? Oh, yeah, my phone fell. I'm going to check that real quick. I think it was Matt and Alex, and then, um... Who's the third guy? James? I have to go and check. Um, give me a second. But all of them are really cool. And even Chris and Danny were like, we don't worry about this thing. Because something had happened at VidCon. Somebody got upset with me. It was a friend who got upset with me. And the reason that they gave another friend who told me was that it has something to do with them. And I'm like, really, this happened. Okay. And I go and I approach them, and I'm asking them, hey, did you guys not feel okay with this? And it's like, no, we were okay with this. Don't worry, dude. And again, it goes to show the opening 
how open these guys are. And it's like, one thing that's scary about vlogging is that you're always trying to be conscious of everything. So that's why the vlogger staff has a rule where it's like, after getting one person on camera, you kind of shut it off. If you ever meet them a second time, you don't put the vlogger staff in their face. That's why when I met um, Lou Burger and um, Zach and Quasi for the third time, it was like, my camera's not being pointed anymore. It's like, hey, and it's like, this is more genuine. But I will give you this warning. Be careful with some of the people that you meet. I met a lot of really awesome people. But now I'm scared to death as to the stuff that I do while well, tick off people, and I have to overcome that. Because it's like, it hurts when people get upset all of a sudden. And it's like, I'm always asking myself, what is it that I did wrong? What is it that I did wrong? And I do want to cover this in another episode of the podcast. But I'm stuck in that mindset where it's like, what did I do wrong? And I'm always apologizing. I'm always like, sorry, sorry, sorry. Again, it happened with Matt Potts. It's going to happen with a bunch of other people. And it's like, you got to get out of that mindset, dude. Don't worry about it. But was VidCon good? It was good. Could it be better? Definitely. I do think that the panels, um, they need to be organized a little bit better. So we're not like rushing from one panel to the next panel to the next. Um, I do love how they did it for the most part. But I felt like as though with day one especially, it was like, this is colliding. You got to rush out to this panel and head over to this panel. Do it like a school system where you have at least like five minutes to go from one to the next. Um, the food trucks were amazing. I wish that there were more, but it was, but at the same time, I also see that there were like two food trucks by the festival stage and it's like, oh, that makes sense. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to think of what else. The community hall needs just a little bit more stuff. And if you guys could try and figure out if there's a way to shade people waiting outside for registration, especially on day one. I know that the halls, um, not the halls, the sidewalk, they might not allow you to do stuff like that. Maybe you could try. I don't know. But overall, VidCon was a really good experience. I loved it. Um, I loved everybody that I met. I have some really cool new followers now. And I can't wait to post those vlogs. Um, would I go back again next year? I'm thinking about it. I'm actively thinking about it. I have a group who wants to go back to GalaxyCon. And I know for a fact that I'm going to want to go back to other conventions. One thing that will definitely impact my decision is the fact that there's no Morphicon next year. And this life is way too short to be like, oh, I got to go just once. I mean, like, yeah, even if you go once, still, like, try and see if you could go multiple times. Have fun with it, you know? So, yeah, that's all there is to it with the um, VidCon. That's it, you know? Guys, I can't believe it. It was really fun. It was really fun. And so, thanks for watching the second episode of the Jagged Cast. Trust me, things are going to get a little more serious from here on out. Ah, you can count on that. But until then, I will see you all in the next episode. And until then, peace.